The last time I saw a spirit, I was about four, five. Yeah. That's the last time I thought I saw a fucking spirit, but I was also four. Who did you see? When you're four, you see a lot of creepy fucking shit in your mind. At that time, I was fried bananas. My father had died. My father was died for it. I was fried bananas. Yeah, my mind was fried bananas. <laughs> your father goes out one night and never comes back, and you're a kid, and you're his fucking right hand. So something, I was broken as it was. And one day I told my mom, I go, listen, I saw a spirit in the kitchen, which I really did. I got up in the middle of the night, and I saw this fucking image in the kitchen, and he had like a fucking jacket on, and he turned around, and that's it. And I just stood there for a second, the hair in my body stood, and mm -hmm. that was it. I never fucking saw a spirit again. I was, 50 I've, years later, still haven't seen one. I've been waiting. That's crazy. I've been waiting for somebody to show up and tap me in the shoulder in the middle of the night and talk to me and shit. But even just having thought of him could have been kind of... No, and that's why, no, that's why I counted for. As soon as I saw that picture, I go, whoever tells you no, mm -hmm. you know... Uh, my best friend Jimmy Burkle, couple years, he's the one I came out to Colorado with. He was tight. Me and him were tight. He he was a great dude. I was very lucky to have him in my life. I learned a lot how to be a friend from him. But he was in the hospital with cancer. Mm -hmm. And I kept calling his cell phone. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't get a hold of him. And I knew. I knew it was just a matter of days before he was going to die. And I got a call from him Friday. He called and he fucking pretty much told me goodbye. Mm -hmm. And the next day he was gone. And I'm like, at least he fucking called. You know what I'm saying? Like in my mind, I'm like, something makes people do something like that. Yeah. When Carmine Balzano died last year, mm -hmm. the morning he died, he called me. When I was calling him back, he didn't answer and I knew. Oh, that's right, you said. And uh, a week later, they go, Coco, we looked at his phone. You called him. You, you, you called him 10 minutes later. He must have died right after he hung up, which is fucking creepy. Yes. What if he would he would have said hello, Coco? I was thinking about you, and he hang up the phone, and he'd fucking die. You know, I believe now because I've seen and felt creepy fucking shit. You know, mm -hmm. it's not on that level. What about deja vu? And it's not for me. It's not usually with big things. It's like little conversations or right. things I've seen before. But it's just I like it happens a lot, and I don't think it's stuff that happened before. It's just really, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy, but it happens to me every few months. Really? Yeah, every like at least every six months or something. Yeah. It used to happen to me a lot more when I was younger, and then as I got older, I got out of the deja vu business. But sometimes in an airport, sometimes just at weird places. It's like I think about walking it. down the aisle of the grocery store. Yeah. And you'll have one. It'll something random. The creepiest thing. Before my mom died, right across the street, the house that I robbed like four times, and <laughs> running the Puerto Rican dude, Rudy, and the speakers <laughs> and shit. <laughs> well, out of nowhere, some other lady moved in there. <laughs> and she was a crazy Cuban lady. How crazy is that? And she was a black Cuban chick. And not, a, not, not attractive or anything. She was like in her 50s and stuff. And this is a fucking hilarious story. She would... How big thing that was that she passed in Guapirito. She passed the spirit, mm -hmm. like, every couple fucking nights a week. <laughs> you know, you would hear yelling and screaming, and she'd be out there, boo bo yelling and stuff, like saying fucking African stuff. And How did your uh, white Catholic neighbors like that? Well, I, you know, it's like embarrassing my mom. My mom's <laughs> like, I don't know this fucking lady, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, loca. why do you, you know, because she was Cuban, so... Uh, so my mom went over and talked to her and stuff, and <laughs> and one night, dog, this fucking I'm I'm coming up the corner, and she's out there, and her daughter's like, "A spirit, come back in the house." Oh my God, she talks to her like a dog. No, like the, she would talk to her like the spirit, like she knew it was a spirit in her mother's body. Her mother would be out there barefoot, walking on glass and shit, mm. yelling in African terms, like out in the street. The spirit that entered her. Wanted to go outside and yell at people and talk oh, to people. Oh, my God. And I'll never forget this, dog. I saw her. I was 15, 16. I didn't make eye contact with her. I kept walking up the hill. And this bitch started yelling at me like, oh, 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 oh like in this weird language. Uh -huh. She crossed the street halfway. 
And as I was putting my, and in those days, I could either walk up those three stairs or I had the garage keys. I could put my key in the garage. We had the old school, then you just pick up the garage. And <laughs> I was picking up the garage. She says, da, 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 da. and she goes, hey, your father has a message for you. Dog, I shut that fucking garage door, ran upstairs. I mean, you know, shit like that. You didn't stay for the message? You didn't get the message? No. What was the message? I didn't stay for the message. What is my my dead dad of fucking uh, 10 years? He's really going to send me a message, guys. Well, would you, how would you know you, your dad wasn't alive? This is the question. That's what I'm saying. You should. This is the uh, question that has always haunted me. I never told my mom. I never told nobody. You know, shit like that happens. Sometimes, do you ever believe in lucky coincidences? Always. Yeah, yeah, it's half a life. Yeah, you know, so uh, lucky coincidences. Huh. I don't want to see a spirit. I don't want to go to a fucking seance. When I was a kid, I grew up around that. I grew up on that side of Cuban stuff. Uh Because they always felt that since my dad had died, he was kind of like at night. There's nights Mercy crawls in the bed with us. Mm -hmm. And it's a long fucking night of sleep. (laughs) Because she likes to sleep. She sleeps sideways, but it's not that. It's how many fucking times she moves in her sleep. So, like, if my mom was still alive and saw that. Oh, yeah. By now, she would have got to see this old lady who would have threw cards for her or fucking seaweed seeds and told her what bothering this little girl. And it could be a relative of 10 years. It could be somebody who's not letting this child sleep. Nine out of 10, they just make you put a glass of water under the bed. <laughs> All right. And that works? Number one, they make you put a glass of water <laughs> under your bed. And if you talk in your sleep, you have to put your right slipper over your left slipper. I've never heard that one. That's as deep as Cuban as it gets. So for these motherfuckers, let's say you're, you're banging the fucking boss and your husband don't know, you don't want to talk in your sleep, do you? So you put the right <laughs> shoe over the left shoe. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> if your husband tells you, you talk in your sleep and you're sucking the boss's dick, you got to put the right shoe over the left shoe and you'll be fine. <laughs> Oh, my God. That's how fucking Cuban superstitious my family was. 